Welcome to Music She Missed, the podcast where I try to get my best friend caught up in some of the most popular songs and artists that impact our lives. I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I missed all the music. Yes, you did. Rachel, we are here for our season four wrap-up. Fun note, we started recording season four two years ago. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So, good times. Um, Talking about good times, we are currently in the pandemic of 2020. These are not good times. This is a super weird tech Zoom anchor tech hybrid, like wonky call hey but at least we've got technology you know yeah otherwise we'd have to do one of those things where we take two cups with a string and run it (laughs) to the other house (laughs) i could see us sending pigeon messages back and forth to our houses would you like to listen to our pigeon text podcast (laughs) coming soon to the next apocalypse okay well i just i i just wanted to say that because uh if something sounds weird to our audience we are using some different methods uh so rachel yes yes (laughs) um ages and ages ago we listened to 10 bands, 10 groups, 10 artists. And um, we did have a little snafu, unfortunately. Mm. Um, one of those 10, we recorded the episode and it got lost in tech space. And we have an hour of mm. silence. Sorry, Weezer. You'll never know what Rachel thinks about you. And deeply sorry <laughs> to our um guest host that week, Elias, who worked so hard. Sorry, Elias, that the Weezer episode disappeared. You were a great guest host. Rachel, why don't you tell our audience what you thought about Weezer? I think we ended the week um, with about a seven, maybe an eight. Wow. So So positive. Yeah, it was positive. Um, I wouldn't say it's a nine or a ten, but um, it was still good. Right. So pro Weezer. Yeah, pro Weezer. Thank you, Elias. (laughs) um great so i just want to remind you and our audience that this season we covered a lot of genres we did Uh, i really like that yeah so we did funk pop we did country twice we did rockabilly rock and roll we did 90s rock twice we did r&b we did soul we did indie pop parentheses anti-folk and we finished our season with heavy metal (laughs) whoa um, so we went down a lot of new paths with some really big names. Well, I think one of the things that I really liked about this specific season is that it really built on to the past seasons that we had and with the, how yes. it was so eclectic, it still was mm-hmm. building at the same time where honestly, you shocked me with the last one with the metal. And I was just like, what are you going to end the season with? And Mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, so really you're going to end that way. (laughs) But it was, it was a powerful ending. Um, So going through all those genres, the fact that it has been a while since we actually finished recording the season, what, what is sticking with you still? Like it's been a long time. So what is still there kind of when you think about this past season of music she missed? So one of the things that I specifically learned in season one that I know that might shock our listeners is I never really recognized any of the music in restaurants or if you go into the store, like I never really listened to it, nor did I even know what the music was. Yes. But now that we've progressed into the multiple seasons of music she missed, I was, um, I was able to not only recognize some of the music, but also really start singing along with it. I got to the point where I can memorize some of the lyrics and Mm -hmm. follow the beats and then also just really enjoy it with my family. Um, And one of them Mm -hmm. was kind of fun was Island in the Stream. So Uh, Dolly Parton. Yes. uh, With Kenny um, Rogers, who actually um, passed away this past year. Mm. And so what um, on the day that Kenny Rogers um, passed away, 
um, my husband and I were, were, and we are quite dorky and we were, um, singing Island in the stream to each other. <laughs> Aww. So it sounds like, uh, with Island in the stream, you and your husband really, you had a connection point with the music and then you guys had a connection point with each other. Yes. Where That's awesome. it, it's definitely happened through the other seasons before. But it was just really cool. I like that. And um, it was special. That is nice. Are there any other artists or songs that kind of stand out to you as favorites that, um, especially now that so much time has passed, you really have a connection with? So um, I really enjoyed American Pie. I brought back (laughs) some good memories um, because I never knew this. So... This is me, you know, I'm the one who truly has missed all the music. So when we were young, um, I don't remember where we were going to gymnastics or wherever. My best friend, um, Danielle, and then her twin sister, Amanda, shout out to them if they're listening, yay. Um, Their mom would always take us to gymnastics or dance or wherever, and Mm -hmm. they would always play American Pie. And so through that time, we kind of got to know the song, got to know the lyrics. I just never knew who sang it. I never knew what genre. I didn't know what time era. I didn't know anything about the song other than I always heard it in my friend Amanda and Danielle's mom's car. So for this, I have never found them on Facebook until I was made to listen to the song through Music She Missed. And so I actually oh, found them on Facebook and, um, mm-hmm. cause those memories came up and it was really nice. I really liked that. And so That's... I haven't connected them since middle school. So it was like a way to reconnect. It's funny that you bring up that song. I wanted to talk about it anyway. Um, A, because I knew it was one of your favorites, but also because it's actually not by any of the artists that we, <laughs> that we chose. Um, but what I think one of, the things that I think connects you to that song is the history and you know me knowing that Buddy Holly is one of your favorites from the season I think one of the things that did that was seeing the place in history a place of time a historical event right and connecting it to what's happening in the world and something I want to do going forward in the next season is to bring in more of the history, not just the history of the artist, but the history of the artist in relationship to other things that are happening. Yeah. Like culture and current events and past events. Yes. And, you know, we definitely hit on that when it's relevant in the past, but seeing that that was something that stands out to you makes me want to do that more for our artists coming up um, and really dig into their place in history and their connection to history, knowing that we both, you know, are history majors and <laughs> and that that's something that helps you find a connection and enjoy the music. So Rachel, I wanted to ask you, you know, what are your favorite songs or moments from this season? Like, um, you're totally right. I really did like Buddy Holly the most out of mm-hmm. the season mainly because his clean lyrics and uh, he had a really a bunch of fun beats, which I was super, I guess, surprised when you told me he was from such and such a decade. I was just like, oh, wow. Like if there wasn't static to the recordings of the songs, I would have thought, oh, yeah, he put out this music last week. And I've been like, "Okay, that's a fun beat. Okay, that's really interesting that you say that because <laughs> I don't I don't think his music sounds current at all. I mean, it's great, <laughs> like but it definitely like doesn't fit <laughs> in 2020. Um, but maybe in my 2020. <laughs> in in your 2020, yeah. I think what you're saying is that you're recognizing the um, appeal of music beyond decades. There's a reason that these artists are the ones that people are still talking about 30, 40, 50, yes. 60 years later, right? So that is a good thing to note, though, 
you know, he's definitely of an age. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also love the song Kiss. By so, Prince. Um, huh? By Prince. By Prince. Yes. Mm-hmm. So a friend of mine told me to watch this show, I think on Netflix or Hulu, and it's called New Girl. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. I haven't gotten to watch it yet. She asked me to watch a specific episode, and Prince is on it. (laughs) Oh, how fun. And um, she didn't know that we were recording um, for Music She Missed with Kiss. Not, yeah, not Kiss, Prince. That's his name. And, (laughs) um, And she just like, hey, watch this episode. And I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, wait a second. Allison taught me about this guy. I know who he is. <laughs> I was very yes. excited and very proud of myself. <laughs> you sh- Well, good. You should be. That's a really exciting thing to experience. And imagine watching the episode and not knowing who he is and feeling in the dark. <laughs> How sad would that be? Oh, that is my life story because I have <laughs> missed everything. <laughs> I know. I know. I but we- we're getting we're getting past that. So, um I would like to ask you as like what did this season bring to you in terms of how you view music and how you view musicians? Because we did talk a, a lot about some really creative, impactful musicians. Well, I think for some of the things that I know this sounds a little bit weird, but maybe it doesn't. With going on with the pandemic, um, some of these artists are like starting to play on their, I guess, Twitter account, Facebook accounts. I don't know what they have, social media accounts in their living rooms where Mm -hmm. their love and their passion for their music and their followers, I mean, into the thousands and I don't know how maybe millions or people are just watching them play in their living room because of how much they love it. And it's just very, it's, this is happening all over the world where it's such a community and it's such a way to bring light from the darkness of what we're all going through. And mm-hmm. I thought that was just something so cool and also something that I have so not been a part of, but kind of watching it all um, and then watching some of this music that I've learned through these past couple seasons, seeing that how, wow, you know, some of the stuff is, um, I'm starting to recognize it. And I get to be a part of it by watching in and listening into it. So I thought that was really encouraging. Um, it's a it really enjoyable. It's a really interesting point that you make that during this really dark time, people are, you know, doing these artistic collaborations, right? And these concerts from their living rooms and streaming. And people are creating art because um, that's one of the things that makes us that brings us joy, right? That brings like happiness and connection into the world are not just these artists from this season, but just artists in general, like bringing their, their points of connection for so many people, right? And through this season and hopefully upcoming future seasons, you're going to find more of those points of connection and find more ways to connect with, you know, your neighbors, your friends, just fellow humans through this like artistic medium. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully by the time this episode actually airs, <laughs> we will be way past all that. But, um, <laughs> but the recognition of what music gives to people will stick. Yes. I like that. I like that a lot. So Rachel, as we're wrapping up the season, what would you like to learn more about? What would you like to understand in the future? Because um, season five is not set in stone. And I want you to have some input in what you'd like to see more of, what you would definitely like to avoid. We will take your opinion into account because we want you to get the most out of it. Cool. Well, I think our listeners already know I have a pool in my backyard. Yes. And as, cool as I can be. I just can't blare out instrumental music constantly, you know, uh, poolside music, you know, that kind of okay. thing. But I don't know if my listeners know that we, uh, my family and I have a golf cart 
And mm-hmm. my family and I, um, my daughter, even my dog, yeah, we have a special seatbelt thing for her. And uh, my husband and me, we go golf karting around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And lately with this pandemic, I mean, all of our neighbors are out. Everyone's out, you know, of course, doing the social distancing six feet away from each other. Right. But for us, we usually have our kind of our Bluetooth speaker in the front basket playing music. And I really can't play Barbie girl all the time. Like I need, please don't. I I know I have it. I promise you, but I okay. need, I'm looking for this upcoming season, some cool music so I can look cool in my golf cart. And Ooh. as I'm zoom, you know, driving around in my neighborhood, because my neighbors are looking at me and some of my music selection may be a little off because I am that special. <laughs> so that is so interesting um, because cool is so subjective. Right? <laughs> like what, like I, like what your neighbors think is cool and what I think is cool um, and what some of our future guest hosts think is cool um, are not all the same, but I'm definitely um, therefore going to talk to some of my cousins and friends in their twenties and get some like current pop for you cool. so that we can get some things, you know, at least in this um, century. <laughs> Cause I tend to focus a lot. I love the old stuff. So, well, I, I, did... I get good responses for the old stuff because like old my neighborhood has, it's a very eclectic feel. Um, I've got, you know, some grandparents. I've got, you know, I've definitely got the tweens and the teenagers that are walking around. Totally yeah. Ignoring because they're being made to walk their dog and they've got headphones in or something. And then we've got the families with the young kids. So it sounds like you don't want something that's cool. You want something that's likable. (laughs) And those are not necessarily the same thing. You want like things that are kind of enjoyable by everybody. Right. Like how, like what you feel about like Buddy Holly, like this is, um, this is a kind of artist everybody can enjoy. So before, you know, the pandemic was happening, we'd drive our, um, our daughter who's in elementary school Um, in the golf cart to school um, in the morning and the crossing guard overheard our music and it was, you know, Buddy Holly. He was just very, he was like, this is great. It was nice. I was like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm wearing cool music. You're you're cool to the retired crossing guard. Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, um, wow. So what you just said really doesn't change my plans at all because (laughs) (laughs) because really you just want music that is going to be enjoyed and appreciated by the people around you. Yes. May it be and maybe some of the kids, like, please don't do Baby Shark. I know that song. Please don't do that. Don't worry. Don't need that. <laughs> but don't stuff worry. that is going to make people smile, make people laugh and enjoy and be like, yeah, that family that has the golf cart and the dog. Cool. And the little girl. Cool. Oh, you know, that kind of a thing. Well, I do want to just make you excited that, um, so going forward in season five, I don't know if we have fully talked about this or not yet, but our audience for sure doesn't know that we are moving toward a, you know, majority guest format. Um, this is for a couple of reasons. One is, um, we've reached the end of my natural inclination and unless the show just becomes songs I like or bands I like, um, I'm not going to be able to give you the diversity that you really need to like grow. And second, like the knowledge base, it's so much more fun to have an extra person who really is passionate about an artist and that can bring their love and their passion for that artist to you and make it contagious and make it like, like you want to get to know that artist too. So I'm really hoping that as we move to our all guest format in season five, that it's going to create that diversity, the popularity, um, the passion that you're looking for. And because it's going to be coming from a lot of different people in our social circles, we're going to get um, kind of music that you'll find songs that will appeal to everybody, but maybe every artist won't appeal to everyone. Okay. I'm game. 
<laughs> okay, good. Well, I just wanted to tell you um, that doing season four was a real treat. Yes. And I am so glad that um, we are moving forward with season five plans and um, that this, that this show goes on. It does. Because there's so much more music <laughs> for you to get through. I am excited. Let's do season five. All right, Rachel. I will see you in season five. See you then. Bye. Ooh, bye.